And the sign says, your peace starts here. So Bethany, will you just come and read these few scriptures for me? Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. Isaiah 26, the Lord, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is staying on you because he trusts in you. And Matthew 5 says, blessed are the peacemakers for they should be called sons of God. <coughs> and so as I was driving past these car showrooms and the title on the board outside your peace starts here now I understand why they were saying that because you know and I know when you get a car the last thing you want is any trouble with a car so that was actually saying that they possibly, and I don't know, but I've never used a garage before, they've possibly done all this work on the car, they've serviced it, they've MOT'd it if you need to, they've checked it all out, and so when you drive your car away, you will be in total peace. Now you know, and I know, that doesn't always happen, does it? But you know, the, the significance of that was, it spoke to me, and it, it was actually saying that your peace starts here. Not tomorrow, not the day after, but your peace starts where? Your peace starts when you learn to actually commit everything to God in every situation. Now you may say, well that's impossible. It's not. Nothing is impossible because God has already ordained every part of your life and my life before the foundation of the world, it was all mapped out. Isn't that fantastic? And so when you know that God is in total control, shouldn't we be more at peace in ourselves, knowing that irrespective of what's going to happen tomorrow, the day after, what's happened yesterday, what's happened next five years, if we're here for that long, God is in total control. Control. <clears throat> and David, what does David say? He said, when I go to bed, I lay down and I sleep. Why? Because I am in, my, my life is in total control with God. Now then, please don't condemn yourself if you're not at peace. But this morning as I speak from the Word of God, take the Word of God into those situations that you find yourself in and start to say, God, this is what your word has to say. Now, somebody was saying to me the other day about <clears throat> being concerned and, and worried. You know, very, very rare, and Joy will tell you this, do I ever come home being worried about anything? Now, I'm a different character than somebody else, because we're all different characters, aren't we? <clears throat> But you know, no matter what our characters are, when we can come to that place where we can really just say, God, I can't change yesterday, I can't change tomorrow, I can't change today, all I can do is to commit myself to you to say, Lord, help me in the situations that I find myself in right now. Is that right? Because by worrying about anything, it's never going to change, is it? Now you may say, well, are you never concerned about things? Yes, I am concerned about things. I'm concerned about, you know, some things that 
sometimes a, a, a what we would actually call my new things, where they know that I'm not going to change some of the situations that I find myself in unless I actually come to God and pray and say, Lord, will you actually guide me? Now, the interesting thing is about prayer is that we pray sometimes to change God's plans, don't we? Guess what's going to happen? That is never going to happen. We are never going to change God's plans in the fact that God has already planned what's going to happen to us. We're not going to change God's mind. Now you may say to me, well, there's cases in the Bible where, like for instance, um, Jonah changed God's mind. No, he didn't. He never changed God's mind because God knew in the first place what was going to happen. And, and sometimes when we pray, we need to come full circle into the plans and purposes that God has got for us. But then we think, ah, oh, I've changed God's mind. No, you haven't. Because God is far bigger than you, me, and everybody else. He's just bringing us into that plan that he'd already got in the first place. So, as I begin to talk about peace, as I say, don't condemn yourself if, you, if you're worried or anything else, but just learn that when you commit your day to God, He will keep you in perfect peace, what? whose mind is staying on Him. Now, if you allow your mind to be tormented by the things that are going on, then you may look at the world today and you may think, well, what's going on in Israel? And, and all I'm hearing at the moment, Iran and, and Israel, and it's going to be at the start of the Third World War. No, it's not. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because God has got a plan, and that plan will be fulfilled in God's time. And I'm not here to be worried about what's going to happen in Israel or Iran or Ukraine or Russia or anything else. Because I know that when that begins to take place, we'll be gone. Amen. Now, if you don't believe it in the rapture, bless you. Enjoy the persecution that you're going to receive when you go through the tribulation. Okay? Because, because we're not going through it according to scriptures. If you want to be in the place where God's wrath is being poured out, that's going to happen in the tribulation. And then when the great tribulation happens, which is going to be worse, we're definitely gone. And so, in the Bible, peace actually represents a state of well-being and harmony that originates from God. You cannot under any circumstances, get your own peace unless you're at peace with God. Now you may say, well, I, I, I want to go to a, a, a nice river. And you know, when you go to a nice river and, and it's nice and peaceful and, it, and the water's flowing and, and, and the birds are singing and everything, it is fantastic, isn't it? Just to forget about the cars and, and everything else and all you can hear is this peaceful river flowing down or a waterfall or something like that. But you know that is only temporary because you've got to go back into the noise and the hustle and bustle of everything else. But when you have real peace with God, irrespective of the storm that you may be going through, you may even be in right now, or maybe in a few weeks time you're going because God always already all all get my words right, God prepares his people for what they are about to go to. And so you may be, at the moment, not, as it were, disturbed or troubled by anything, but maybe in a week or two something may happen, and I don't know, but God has said, so, well, you know what, I've really spoken to you, that in me you will have perfect peace. What does the Bible say? It says, in the world you will have what? Troubles, but in me you will have lasting peace. And your choice is yours of where you want to live. 
If you want to live in Christ, which is what we're supposed to do, okay, then we'll be in perfect peace. Now, look at it this way. When, and I, I, I refer to Isaac, okay, when Isaac is in his mum's arms, he's perfectly safe. Or his dad's arms, he's perfectly safe. Why? Because he knows, he knows, even at this early age, Mum and dad are going to look after you. How much more should our Heavenly Father take care of us? So we may be in situations, and as I say, I've been in one or two myself, where things haven't worked out as I want them to work out, but I also know that God is in control. And the hardest thing, the hardest thing for us to do is to allow God to take total control. It's hard because we think that we can actually sort some of the things out ourselves, don't we? Yeah? Or is it just me? <laughs> we think that we can sort some of these things out ourselves, but God is in control. Not only is peace a gift to be received, but it's also a choice to actually pursue the godly living and thoughts. So the Bible actually says that my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give it I unto you, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus says these words, but until you receive his peace, you're not going to have total peace. You may have a peace that may just last for a short period of time, but we want to receive God's peace. And believe you me, the world that we're living in today, if there's one thing that the world is crying out for, it's peace. That's why they're going to accept the Antichrist. You know why? Because the Antichrist is going to come and he's going to bring it all together and he's going to say, I'm going to give you peace. They don't know that his peace is a false peace. There's only one person that will bring lasting peace, and that's Jesus himself. And so he's going to bring the world leaders together. And he's going to say, Let's going to make, we're going to make a covenant with everybody. And we're going to bring peace. And the way Israel and Iran is going, you can actually see that beginning to form. And he's going to, and people are going to be so fed up with the wars and, and everything else that's going on that are going to say, yes, let's make a peace treaty. We see, bear in mind that Satan has always been a deceiver, and he always will be until he's thrown into the pit. Okay? And so we see that he will deceive all the nations by bringing in the Antichrist with a covenant of peace. Not realising the people who signed this government, this peace uh, a treaty, that after three and a half years he's going to break it. So it's not a lasting peace, only a temporary peace. But the world today, if you, if you used to go to the average person on, on the street and say, what's the most important thing? Some would say money, some would say some, but I, I guarantee the majority would say to be in peace. To live in peace. But you see, it can only be done through Biblical or godly living and thoughts. I was looking at a TV program the other day and he was talking about these people that spend a lot of money just going to this retreat and they don't say anything for seven days. I mean, I don't know how you ladies would cope with that, but it's not impossible, isn't it? Seven days and not saying anything, and all they want to do is to get peace. Can you imagine that? Not saying anything, even with people round about you, they don't say anything for seven days, and they're just meditating and they are just trying to get peace. You know, that's the fault of peace, isn't it? There is only one way to get real peace biblical peace can be both inner response and quietness 
even in adverse circumstances. And the inner peace that we're talking about is the work of the Holy Spirit. When we look in the biblical terms of what peace is, in the Bible, it is not just the absence of conflict, but it's also a state of well-being that comes from God and his will for our lives. John chapter 14 says these words. Verse 27. Jesus said these words, Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The true source, or the source of true peace, can only be found in Christ. So the disciples <coughs> were going to experience things that you and I have never experienced. They were going to experience the fact that the Messiah, that Jesus, who had been with them for three and a half years, was going to leave them. They would see him being tormented, they would see him being beaten and broken and, then, and everything else. But before he went to the cross, he said, I'm giving you my peace. Now if the Lord can give peace to the, to the disciples under those uh, circumstances, how much more can he give us his peace in the situations that we find ourselves in? So you may have a work situation where a colleague is, is actually being a right pain, but you know even in that situation God can give you the peace that passes all understanding. Because when you commit that to Christ, he's actually saying, well, I know the situation you find yourself in, but I'm giving you my peace. It may be a health situation you find yourself in. It may be different situations that you actually say, you know what, I really don't know which way to turn. God, what am I going to do? And the Lord is speaking for this this morning and saying, I'm giving you my peace. My peace that passeth all understanding. My peace that goeth before you. My peace that will actually encourage you. My peace that will actually speak my word into your spirit. God's peace is there for each and every one of us. What does Philippians chapter 4 say? Let's have a look at it, shall we? Philippians chapter 4, verse Seven. <clears throat> you remember to find it. <clears throat> and it says these words, and the peace of God, which one? Passeth all understanding. So I cannot work it out. The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So if you're worried about something today, let me just say this, and this is not to condemn anybody, that is unbiblical. Now the natural thing for us to do is to worry, isn't it? Come on, who doesn't worry? <laughs> There's not many that really don't work. But the Bible says that he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And you know what? And I've been around a few years now. Satan will have you worry about something that you are not in total control of. He'll have you to worry about it. And it cause you, if need be, if you take your mind off God, it cause you to lose your peace on that. You'll be lying awake at night. You'll be thinking about it all day. You'll be 
off your food on, 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 on some occasions because you're worrying about something that you have no control over. Because God says, my peace I leave with you. Now, if God is going to leave you a present, okay, which is what he's done, when he gave his son, he gave you the Lord Jesus Christ, and so he left you a present. If he's leaving you his peace, how do we receive it? By just saying, thank you. And we can't give a present back, can we? We may try. And you know, sometimes when we're worrying about something, we're actually giving it back to God and saying, Lord, it's a peace that you gave me, I'm giving it back to you. Now we don't hear this very often, but it's so important to understand that when God gives you his peace, irrespective of the circumstances that you are in, it's forever. It's forever, and he doesn't want it back. So how do I receive this peace? This peace that God has got for me. Number one, we have to seek God. Okay? We have to take everything to him in prayer. What does the songwriter say? Um, the hymn writer actually says, Oh, what needs we often falter. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. You know, the first thing we need to do is to take it to God in prayer. Take it there and then leave it. Okay? Why? Because when we've taken a situation to God in prayer, and we know that God is in control of our life and he gives us that peace, we have to say, thank you, Lord. Can't do nothing about it. But here you are. And he gives it. And I, I've been in one or two conflicts and I know that, you know, it's not been easy sometimes to actually just leave it there. But you know, I can't remember, and I'm, I'm not boasting when I say this, but I can't remember staying up awake at night losing any sleep. Now, we're all different characters, I know. But we have to trust God. So we need to see God's presence. We need to trust in God's promise. Now, this is a big one. Now, if you don't get anything else from this this morning, remember this. If you want God's peace in a situation, you need to learn to forgive. Okay? And you need to seek reconciliation. There are people today in our churches that have taken communion this morning and they're not at peace with their brother or sister in the church. If I'm going to receive God's peace, I've got to learn to forgive anybody that may have done something against me. Now, uh, you may say, well, where's your scripture for that? Turn over to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. When Jesus starts to talk on the Beatitudes, he says these words. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. We need to seek God's peace and we need to forgive. There are some other things that we need to do. We sometimes need to renew our mind because our mind can get clogged up with all sorts of different things. In, in Christ, we need to renew our mind. Romans chapter 12. I'm going to give you a few scriptures in a minute. You might want to write them down. Because God doesn't waste his words. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. 
and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He would say, well, what's that going to do? Because our minds sometimes get clogged up with the things of this world and we lose our peace because our mind is focused on other things. We need to renew our mind on a regular basis. And we can only do that as we begin to read the Word of God. We also need to be practical in our gratitude. We need to thank God for the blessings even in challenging circumstances. Colossians I wish some people would have spoke to me when I was going through some situations. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. And Paul is saying, And let the peace of God <coughs> rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So we need to allow the peace of God to rule in our hearts, but also we need to be thankful. So the challenging circumstances that we're in. Now, let me ask you a question. If you was to go through life without any challenging circumstances, how would you really know the true peace of God? You wouldn't, would you? So when these circumstances come against us, and we can take them to God in prayer, and God says, I know those situations that you find yourself in, but here's my peace in the matter, you then go to bed and sleep, and you wake up and thinking, what was I worrying about? Because I'm in God's hands. You know, I can never remember as a child worrying about what my next meal was going to come from. Can you? I never remember worrying about, you know, what was going to happen the day after. I can never remember worrying about anything. Why? Because I knew that my mother and my father, my natural parents, would be taking care of me. How much more should we be concerned? Or should we be saying, God, I know that you can take care of my every situation. We also, <coughs> we're going to receive God's real peace. We need to live in obedience to him. Psalms 119. Listen to this now, this is, this is a fantastic portion. Great peace have they which love thy law. In other words, great peace have they which love thy law, or love thy word, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall upset them. Psalms 119, 165. Great peace. But who is he talking to there? He was talking about those that will be obedient to the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. That's his word, isn't it? You can't, you, you, there is no middle ground. There's, there's, there's no open spaces. You either accept his peace or you worry. And you know, if you worry about something that you're not in control of, it's going to affect your health, it's going to affect your eating, it's going to affect everything that you um, have. Another one I've put down here, and you'll find it's very interesting. Sur surround yourself with supported, like-minded believers. If somebody that you're going to uh, a lot to do with is a natural warrior, you need to find another friend. And I'm not looking at you, Dave, sorry. 
Dave's looking at me. No, we're not looking at you. You need to find another friend. You need to find somebody that's positive, somebody that will encourage you. Come with somebody that will say with you, I'll, I'll pray with you, I'll encourage you. you and I would go the point as far to say you need to find a church that's got those same supportive people that will actually pick you up and say, come on, together, we're on this race. You know, when I go into a church and nobody even speaks to me, and nobody even says hello or greets me or anything else, there's something majorly wrong. And I've been in those situations. See, nobody knows my circumstances. Nobody knows really what I'm going through. And, and sometimes we don't know what you're going through until you begin to share with us and, and tell us. And the scripture for that is found in Ecclesiastes. Too sure where Ecclesiastes is about the Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And we read from verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labour. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Two are better than one. So when that person that is actually struggling comes along with somebody else that's a little bit more, like a bubbly, as I say, that person can actually encourage that person and lift them up and say, together we can win this race. Together we can do it. Surround yourself with people that will be supportive, supportive to you. <coughs> Remember, too, true peace comes from a relationship with God. As you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. His peace will guard your heart and your mind. And that's found in Philippians 4, verse 7. Did you also know, in Galatians 5, 22, did you also know that the word peace in the New Testament alone is found 92 times? So if somebody is speaking to me 92 times about one particular subject, don't you think I should listen? So he's actually saying, I'm giving you my peace in the circumstances and the world is in a total mess, isn't it? Politics is in a total mess. But he's saying with, out of all of the circumstances you find yourself in, whether it's a world this situation or, or whatever it is, it may be a job, you may be about to lose your job, you may be about to lose something else. But God is saying, in this, I'm giving you my peace. And the Bible has a lot to say about this. I, I could share a lot more about this, but I'm just going to try and just wrap it up in the next five or ten minutes. Most people yearn for one thing more than anything else, and that's inner peace. Inner peace. The people that go to yoga, what do they do? They empty themselves of everything that they've got and they try to focus on one particular person or one particular thing. And we know that, you know, when we look into the Word of God, especially yoga and things like that, it's unbiblical. Because you're emptying yourself of, of all that you have. And a lot of it is based on Eastern religion, which is unbiblical. More than anything else, people want inner peace. Without it, they have no lasting joy or security. Ephesians chapter 2 says these words, For he himself is our peace, and he came and preached peace to you and me who were afar off, and to those who were near. If you haven't got real peace, you need to surrender 
to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the true source of peace. Jesus was saying to the disciples, my peace I'm leaving with you. And what he's actually saying these words, he says these words, he says, I leave with you, listen to this now, my last, my best, my dying legacy. My last, my best, my dying legacy. Peace not the kind the world gives, we know, don't we? We read um, the word of God that they killed the Prince of Peace or well, they tried to but they couldn't succeed. But he is coming back to rule and to reign on this earth and he will bring peace and he will bring judgment. One other scripture I'd like us to turn to is found in 2 Peter. Chapter 3. And we start at verse 14. <clears throat> 2 Peter. Chapter 3, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, that they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Yea, therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things, before, beware, lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace. Grow in grace and grow in peace. And in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and forever. Let me just ask you one final question. Are you living in peace. Are you living in the peace of God which passeth all understanding? Are you going to bed worrying about things? Are you going through the day thinking, I wonder what's going to happen? I, I wonder if my job's going to be secure. I wonder if this is going to happen and that's going to happen and everything else. Do you know what? This is not to condemn anybody, but you need to come to that place where you just say, Lord, I cannot change the circumstances I find myself in, but I'm committing them to you, that you will bring me into your peace, that even the circumstances I find myself in will be your blessing in that situation. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. How do I get the mind of the Lord? By reading his word. Not by reading the Sun newspaper. Not by reading the Daily Express. Not by listening to the BBC News. By reading the word of God. And knowing what God has planned for my life. And when you understand that God has planned your life in such a way that no harm will come to you. Okay? Then you will know that God is in total control. Who this morning, who today really needs lasting peace? Who, who's in that situation where you think to yourself, well, I'm not really, I really haven't got that peace that the Lord is talking about. You know, you need just to commit it to the Lord. The situation that you find yourself in today commit them to Christ and I guarantee you when you commit them to God and leave them in your hands, his hands, you'll get lasting peace. You may not always get the results you want, but you'll know that God is in control. Lord, I thank you for your word. I praise you and I thank you for the peace of God that you've given to us.
which passeth all understanding. He says, shall keep your heart and your mind stayed on me. We thank you, Lord, that even in the situations that we find ourselves in, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you've allowed it, Lord, for a reason. And I just pray, Lord, that you'll help us to be in perfect peace, even, Lord, in those circumstances. Lord, for each and every one that, Lord, may not be in that peace that you're talking about, Lord, from your word today, I just pray, Lord, help them as they pray and seek your face, that, Lord, you will cause them to come into your peace. And maybe, Lord, people will be listening on the on the internet, Lord, I just pray that you'll bring them into perfect peace. And if anybody doesn't know you as our Lord and Saviour, we pray, Lord, that you will bring them to that place where they will accept you as our Lord and Saviour and find true peace, because, Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you. And uh, just commit everything to the Lord.